Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. So I just want to give you a scripture ready so we prepare. Luke 22, you're going to go to Luke 22, uh, chapter 22, sorry, chapter 22, verse 31 and 32. But I, we just got back from Japan, and it was amazing. Let me tell you that I never knew how much Japanese I knew. <laughs> I, I talked to people. I said Toyota, Suzuki, uh, Yoshinoya. By the way, they have a Yoshinoya. You know, um, so every, every word that I knew, but I'm going to tell you something that I fell in love with Japan. The people, unless uh, Mie and uh, Devin was, uh, they were saying to us that there is less percent, one percent, zero point actually to be uh, accurate, zero point three uh, percent of Christianity. So when you're sharing Jesus, you have to start from the bottom. Like, who is Jesus, right? On this side, on the western side, we know who Jesus is, what he did. Um, but what I noticed is that they were so hungry. And you know what? They're hungry. They might not I'd understand Jesus. They might not like, okay, they want to know about God. But one of the things that they are so hungry is for the move of the Holy Spirit. Because they can deny and say, well, I don't know. But if you said, I, I realize that if I offer prayer, and, and I think... I. Any person that I say, would you like, can I pray for you? And they said, yes. I'm going to tell you that all of them were touched by the Holy Spirit. And it wasn't because I'm a pastor. And it wasn't because I believe in the Holy Spirit. I believe that we are not orphans, right? We have the Holy Ghost. And, and they were so receptive. And they said, we want more. Like, how do I get this? Like, oh, you get him. But it was, it was just really really amazing how hungry they are uh, we need to continue to pray for for japan 2020 and they even are planning to i think we're going to open this year because the need is so much it's it's vast one of the things that i found out while i was there is that the highest rate of mortality is not sickness you know that it's suicide between the ages of 15 and 34 and I'm like, how is it possible that we, that we have the great news? Because the Bible is good news. It just depends how you read it. If we read it with the, with the, with the, with the mindset that our God is good. You know, when I started reading the Bible, I didn't, like, I didn't understand it. I was so upset at the Old Testament. You have, you know, I met those people that are like question after question after question. And God is such a good God that he's, not, he's never going to get upset at you. And last Wednesday, I was watching, by, by the way, I watched everyone to preach. Since I couldn't sleep, I was like, hey, let me live stream, right? You guys were here, and I was like at 3 in the morning, like, oh, they're preaching. And so I, was, I watched everyone, and they, everybody did a great job. So thank you so much for your support, for your love, for your prayers, because they were felt. Uh, but I'm a mother, you know, right? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to brag on my son. <clears throat> so he was preaching and I was like I was so happy until he threw me under the bus right he's like I'm her uber and I'm like and I've been your cook and your driver like you know but, but I was so I was so proud of him I was so proud of him and sometimes you can see a person like that and he's only 20 years old and you think that he was born that way oh no he wasn't born that way you should have met him when he was 12, 13, and 14, and 16. Uh, but, but as I saw, I was like, my God, sometimes we just quit. We just, we just give up on God because we're not seeing the promises of God come to pass in the time that we want it. And so he, did, he mentioned something about going the extra mile. So my message is I'm going to piggyback on him, and it's going the extra mile. But I'm not going to I'm not going to go in the sense that we need to go the extra mile. Sometimes I'm not going to I'm not going to go in the sense that let's 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 go for an extra mile. Let's be. Let's let let's let's do. It's let's be. Because Jesus always he will never ask us. God will never ask us to do anything that he has never done for you and I. 
And he has always gone the extra mile for you and I. And the verse that I gave you is in Luke 22. And it says, and the Lord said, this is Jesus. Simon, Simon, indeed, Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. And when you have returned to me, strengthen your brethren and sisters, right? Everybody's welcome here. And I love what the Amplify says. It says, Simon, Simon, Peter, listen, Satan has demanded permission to sift all of you like grain. It wasn't just Peter. But sometimes you know that God needs one person who's going to agree with him. Maybe you're that one person in your family that God is asking you, you know what? Satan has put a demand. But I'm not here to read that to you so you can think, wow, God's going to give him permission. No, we live in a broken world. We live in a world that is full of sin. So the enemy is always going to put his demands, requests. He even has to put a request to come and mess us up because he has no permission. And God is not going to give him that permission. The ones that give him permission is you and I. I mean, that's the reality because Jesus didn't leave us here as orphans. Jesus left us as representatives. So we represent the kingdom of heaven. We have the backup of heaven. So therefore, if he comes and he's knocking and asking the Lord, you know what? I have come and I am placing a demand and I want to assist Virginia. And all of her family and all of her church. And Well, you can ask all you want. But you know what? Sometimes we get stuck. And I used to get stuck in this, in this verse because I, it used to bother me. I already told you about me. Sometimes scripture, scriptures bother me. And I was like, why didn't God or Jesus say, why didn't God say, you know what, Satan, I rebuke you. Peter, don't worry about it. You're good. Don't worry about the disciples. Don't worry about the people. I already pray you're covered by the blood of Jesus, my blood that I'm about to shed. I'm going to go on the cross, and that's how you're going to be covered. So don't worry about that. Jesus didn't say that. This is what he says. He says, but I have prayed, especially for you, Peter. Do you know that if you're the one, maybe the only one standing for family members, friends, I don't know why you're standing and believing God for a miracle. And I believe that some of us are believing for a miracle. We're believing for a breakthrough. But I'm, I'm talking about a serious breakthrough, something that you cannot do on your own. Something that has been a pattern in your life, it can, you can never break it. I'm talking about those things. So he's saying, I have prayed especially for you because all of your family, all of the disciples are going to be attacked. Their faith is going to be attacked. He says, but I have prayed for you. And he says, especially for you, Peter, that your faith and confidence in me may not fail. And you once you have turned back again to me, strengthen and support your brother's in the faith. I'm like, do you understand that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever? So as I was writing this message, I was like, you know what? I have no excuse to say, sometimes, you know, because it's good. I'm going to, as a pastor, and um, many of you, I'm sure, appreciate prayer, because sometimes people say, I'm going to pray for you, but they don't pray, right? We just say good things. That I pray for you. And then probably at night you don't even remember them or you're like, bless Virginia or, you know, something like that, right? But we're talking about Jesus praying for you, especially for you. He says, I'm, I'm praying especially for you that your faith will not fail. So what it means to me is that our faith will fail us many times. And it's not that faith is failing, it's that we're failing faith which is different because faith is calling those things that are not as though they are, right? But we'd love to prophesy those things that are because they are, right? We get tired. We, we get weary. But he says, I'm praying for you daily. And I thought, well, you know what? If, if you think today that maybe no one's praying for you, maybe no one knows what you're going through, let me tell you, Jesus knows what you're going through. And he cares so much. I was doing my hair because I've been sleeping a lot. You know, 
So I should have brought a picture before and after. I right? like, is that the same person? Yeah. <laughs> but as I was like brushing my hair, and it was all a bunch of like, I don't know, like seven hairs. So I was like, and as I was doing it, I always play around saying like, God, did you just update my, my numbers? <laughs> because he says that he has every count of your hair. And I'm hairy, guys. <laughs> this is real. I didn't buy it. He gave it to me because he loves to count my hair. I'm like, God, Lord, you, you love it. Thank you. I appreciate it now. When I was younger, no, but I appreciate it now. But then I thought he cares so much. So what makes me think when I hit a, a hard place or when I do, uh, thank God he always reroutes us, right? Like I hate my son was talking about like, Ways and, and then my way and ways, right? Well, I hate ways. No, I'm not going to say the word. I just like ways. I just like Google. The only one that I like is the Apple one. Because that one gives me like three miles ahead. And that's the way I want to do life. I want, I, want, I want my directions. I want Siri to tell me in three miles you're going to exit or make a right. And that's the way I want to live my life safe. Google tells you like five I don't know five feet before <laughs> and ways forget it you pass it <laughs> I'm like it stresses me I'm like Whoa. I deleted ways I don't know how many times and then whenever I have gone on ways right I don't listen to it because I think I know better but then I never been in that in that in, in that city see how the mind works I said, no, I'm going to do my own ways. So it would be, turn right. No, I'm going left. I feel like if I go left, it will be faster. <laughs> Until one day I had to repent because I don't know what city I was. I think I was in Culver City. And it was really dark, and I was by myself. And then I'm very creative, right? And then I lost connection. And then Waze is not like Siri. And I'm like, I want Siri back. Siri is safe. But then I compare my life, and I'm like, that's the way we want to live life. I want to, I want to know, like, like, way ahead. Don't you, don't you want to do that? We want to live so comfortable. We, it's hard to go the extra mile. And when I'm talking about going the extra mile, it's about talking about believing. Like when nothing is working and you go the extra mile and you raise a hallelujah. Right? Do you know how many times I have come here and I'm in worship and I said, I'm going to raise my hands. No, because I feel it. It's because I have to do it. If, if I'm going to wait to preach and to raise a hallelujah and to read my Bible, dear Jesus. I will still be waiting, you know, fasting because I'm not hungry. <laughs> That's not a fast. <laughs> you know, I have a problem. Like, I don't get hungry. And one day I told the Lord, you know, I was, you know, trying to be spiritual, like, Lord, thank you for this fast. It's like you're fasting because you're stressed. So don't blame me when you do stomach exerting. And I'm like, go the extra mile. He's praying for you. There's nothing. There's no matter how you feel. And believe me, I have felt in my life, in my 22 years of walking with the Lord. And you're like, how is that possible? Because you look 23. I don't know. It's Jesus. <laughs> I love to say that because I'm prophesying. <laughs> but I'm like, do you know how many times I'm like, he has never failed me. Never. Even in my hardest time, in my lowest time, in my dirtiest time, you name it. He has never felt me. I have felt him. And you know what the enemy comes to do? To shame you. And you know that? We're so good at shaming. We want to win the world, but we want to shame them. Shame them to Jesus. You tell me, tell me one person that shame brought transformation to them. Do you know somebody? 
tell me one person that shame brought a born again experience. No, Jesus says that his love covers a multitude of sins. And I'm here to tell you that God wants you to get up. If I will go by my feelings, my friend, you'll be like, where is Pastor Virginia? She is gone. Because she's feeling everything. But then you have to be, I have to be remind, reminded. And that's why, I don't know about you, but, you know, there's days, I might be honest with you, there's days in my life, in my last two years, that I didn't feel like reading the Bible. Because, well, I'm too depressed, or I'm too whatever. But you know one thing is that you might not read the Bible, but I'm going to tell you something. I know the Word of God. The Word of God is in me. I have planted the Word of God in me. Not when everything, when everything was great, I put the Word and the Word and the Word and the Word. And then we have the Spirit of God that comes and He reminds us in the moment that we need it the most. And you're all of a sudden like, uh, uh, scripture drops, right? Like, and you're like, praise the hallelujah. Because <laughs> I have to. I get to. Uh, as a matter of fact, I get to raise the hallelujah. You get to raise the hallelujah. I'm like, when I want, I'm like, hey, I, by the way, I fell in love with Japan. We can edit this part. But we were in the mountains, right? But there were no beds, guys. And I don't do well on the floor, you know. I don't do well without a mattress. You would think like, like I was born in El Salvador. I, I didn't even have a good mattress there. No, seriously. And I'm like, what the heck happened to me? Like, you know, like, ugh, is this my youth or what, what is going on? Like. I was like, next time I'm bringing my own, I don't know, like camping, like, what do you call those? Sleeping bag. But I don't want just any sleeping bag. I want the ones that guys, because we had a friend that he used to go hunt bears, and he has an amazing sleeping bag. You sleep on that baby like you're in heaven. I was like, I'd rather not take clothes. I mean, a few clothes, okay? <laughs> but, a few clothes. A few but I'd rather take my sleeping bag. I was, Lord, I'm really suffering for you. This is suffering. Take this cup away from me. I love it, but I'm suffering. But I love Japan. You know the things that I, that I learned about them? And I was so, like, in awe. Like, every Japanese, they don't hug. It. But I didn't care. <laughs> you know, even someone said to me, like, you're different. Like, I know. I know. And I was sharing my testimony. No, my testimony 22 years ago. I was sharing my testimony, my recently testimony. I'm still walking through, right, regarding depression and all those things that happened to me, right? But I was sharing with so much passion. And she said, well, how do you do that? I'm like, because I have no other choice. I, I, I can't, I, there is no way that I cannot recognize God that he's been with me in the darkest moments. And I said, someone has to tell it. Someone, I know, nobody likes to, like I said, nobody likes to share things. We like to share three years ago when I was, no. Now, you tell me what you're going through now. And I said, no, if I was, if I was living by what I feel, I wouldn't go to Japan. I wouldn't go nowhere. I, I, oh, believe me. But I was telling this woman, and she, and they're very reserved, and they're beautiful people, and they're like, my goodness, you talk to them, and they're full of leadership, and, and, and they have just amazing leadership. They have amazing excellence. But then you know what I saw? It was just a lack of courage. And I'm like, hey, I might not have the leadership, you know. I might not have that excellence. But I'm crazy. I mean, courageous means crazy because that doesn't mean that I'm not afraid. That they're going to say, this woman, is, I told them everything. Okay, you want to hear it? Sit with me. This is what Jesus did. Da, da, da. Would you like it? Yes, I want to. And boom. 
Do you notice I do sounds? Boom. You know, the enemy wants to sift our faith. I don't know if I got a picture ever for sifting. But you know, you know what a sift is, right? You don't even know. <laughs> we don't even know about farming. No, no, that. We're like, everything is fake here. Like, my flowers are fake, you know what I mean? Because I just clean them with oil, and they look great. <laughs> so n never feel bad, like, if you come to my house. It's so clean. It's fake. Okay, so... But the sifting in those times, it was, it says, I, I read it, and it says it was so forceful. And I was looking at some, some videos, and, and I'm like, my good, it was like a shaker. And they're like, throwing the weed and up. And I'm like, no wonder we feel sometimes we don't even know if we're up or down. And it says, this is what it says. It says that it means such a force to, to take away your faith. The sifting is not just to confuse you, like, oh, I don't know, I got here. No, no. The sifting comes to still your faith that belongs to you. And I was getting kind of pissed off. That's not a bad word. When you're upset at the devil. And I was like, you know what? That punk. He comes to lie to us. He comes to steal from us. He comes to tell us that God is never going to do it, that he's never going to deliver us, that he can heal this thing. He only can heal this. No, he is a liar. And we're going to expose him. We're going to expose the liar. Today I had to, I had to, I had to uh, not only repeat the word of God over and over over myself because I'm tired, and when you're tired and you don't sleep, that's not good. And if you're not hungry, that's not even good either. So I said, Lord, I dedicate this fast to you. <laughs> but he took it, you know, he's so wonderful. He's like, okay, Virginia, I'll take it from you. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you that God wants you to know that I don't know where you are in faith, but I'm going to tell you that he has your back. And you can't forget that. I believe that he wants to remove the yokes that we've been, we've, been, we've been carrying so much junk. And it's not even real. I mean, some of it's real, but believe me, the enemy is going to expand it a thousand times. Can we put my, my verse for the... The one about being yoked up. Is it up there? Please, you guys, don't be too fast. <laughs> okay. This is what happens when you don't sleep, okay? So pray for me that tonight I will sleep. Matthew eleven twenty nine thirty 30 says this. This is Jesus. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart. And you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. But isn't it something? I mean, let, let's be, let's be, let's just talk real, right? We all talk. Jada Pinkett Smith is talking real. <laughs> the church should talk real. He says, be yoke with me. Have you ever seen a yoke of oxen? See, we don't know. Let's put a picture. Is there a picture? No, but the other one. <laughs> yes. But they're, they're not unequally yoked. Th th that's one ox. This is the, the other ox. One of the ox, the ox in one is the leader. One is the, the strong one. One is the one that leads. And I'm going to tell you that when we're like this, every time I've been like this, Jesus is still standing for me. Yes. He still stands for you. He's not panicking. My God, Virginia, we're yoked together. I look at you like with your tongue out. I saw that. I was like, oh, my God, that's like me and Jesus. Of course, but, you know, in a sense, right? Like. He's just waiting patiently there like, would you get up now? 
Because he is such a gentle leader that he's not going to pull you. Do you know that? He's not going to make you. He's not going to force you. He allows you to choose. That's why he say, hey, let's yoke up together. And then now we can put the other one. And then sometimes we are equally yoked because we are yoked with an ass. <laughs> are you guys laughing about That's the correct name. The new King James says donkey. King James says the other word. I'm just letting you know. This is Jesus. And I'm not calling people, this could be me. I'm not moving. I don't want to. I know because you guys are so pampered, you know, in the United States. Well, I grew up in, the, in El Salvador, and I, and I lived in the country, but they so, like, I was afraid of, like, bulls and donkeys. And my gosh. Now I know why they're called the other word, you know? Is that a bad word? I don't, I want, I don't want to receive a f uh, phone calls and emails. <laughs> Somebody give me the scripture where it says ass, okay? And I'm not trying to be fun and, and funny or like, right? That's why I love to listen to T.D. Jakes because he reads the King James. <laughs> and he loves to preach on that part. But I'm like, sometimes when I'm moving and everything is so heavy and you're wondering why. No, but God says that his yoke is easy. Well, maybe you're yoked up with the wrong people. Or maybe you're trying to do the leading. And he says, follow me. He didn't say, I'll follow you, Virginia. Whatever you want to go, I'll go with you. I think we have it all backwards. You don't go the extra mile. You're like, what does this have to do with the extra mile? Unyoke yourself with whoever you have yoked with. And many times it's not a person because I'm not saying this to make fun of people. No, I'm saying that this could be me. Because I said, I, I, I seen some donkeys when I'm growing up and my gosh, you can push them and push them. And they're like rocks. You can even offer them like food. They don't move. They're fasting. <laughs> Just like me, fasting. Wow, this donkey knows how to fast. No, he's just, oof. And there's a word in Spanish that parents, if I don't know if this is for Central Americans, when the kids don't listen, they call them burros. <laughs> like the burritos from Mexico that you eat. No, it just means that you're stubborn as, you know, as heck. Because <laughs> I'm using proper words today. Because I haven't slept. And my husband's going to be like, what did you preach? Babe, it's in the Bible. <laughs> it is in the Bible. <laughs> so Jesus said, I'm going to go for my more soon. But Jesus says, told Peter, he says, he says, I have prayed for you, and when you come back to me, can you put it again, my last, the other scripture? You have to catch up with me. Uh -huh. <sighs> oh, no, the one, the first one. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Jesus. It's not their fault, it's my fault. It says in verse 32 of Luke, it says, but but I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. And when you have returned to me, it says when you have returned to me, and another verse is when you have returned back to me, that means that many times we leave them over and over and over and over. And he says, you know, when you return back to me, we're going to meet in the office. I'm sending you to the pastors, and then you're going to be on sit down for like six months. <laughs> right? You're going to go to a discipleship class. You're going to read 30 verses and you're going to raise a hallelujah 25 times. 
No, we do that because we get to. No, it says when you return back to me, this is all I want you to do. I just want you to, hey, I'm going to receive you with open arms. I just want you to return back to me. I don't know where you've been. I just want you to return back to me. And he says, now that you return back to me, I don't want to talk about what happened. All I want you to do is to strengthen your brothers and sisters. If their faith is failing, that's our job. But my goodness, you know when my faith has failed me? I'm even spitting. It's anointed. <laughs> There's people that have told me, Virginia, your faith. My gosh, dude, I feel like a guacamole. You know, those things like you're down and you're like, like the other, you know, ox that was all tired. And then Jesus is just waiting there praying for me. Virginia, get up. You have my DNA, have given you my spirit. Every day he prays for me, right? And then I feel like someone with the walk of wells, rocky things, you're like, get up, get up. <laughs> and then you kind of left your, your face and then like, plack out. That's what we do. May I tell you? The majority, I'm not saying everybody. And I'm not saying this church is other churches. No, where is the passion? Jesus died for, it's the, called the passion of Christ. It's not called the judgment of Christ. It's called the passion of Christ. So he says, return to me and now go help. Go find people that you know that they're, they're, their faith is failing. Maybe they're not the best in the best place of their life. And maybe they're the one who designed their own holes. But God is not asking you, okay, help this one. Because this one, something happened to them and they were not in control of it. But this one, no, they take their own hole. So that one don't help. No, we are to give hope and life to all. To all. And then I want you to go to Ezekiel 37. Because today we're going to speak to some dry bones. And I'm even going to sing a song. No, just kidding. No. I saw some people like, what? Okay, are you there, Ezekiel? You know I don't work out, right? I'm just going to disclose that because what I'm going to talk about it, about it, it's like I've heard from people that you get a second wind. I was like, what is that? Like on the first wind, I'm like, I'm done. <laughs> I just feel dizzy and like, oh, goodbye. I have no like, why are people going to think of you? Who cares? I might be puking in the parking lot because it was, the workout was too much, Right? But they're just, no, you, you stay there, just stay there, because you're going to get a second win, second win. Second. But you know what? I have never experienced a second win, and this is a working out, right? Because I have, I have not given them the opportunity. Because it's too uncomfortable. Oh, no, 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 I'm going to get dizzy. And all I can think about somebody, like, recording me and putting me on Facebook. She passed out, like. <laughs> and she was dressed like she knew what she was doing, but no. I'm like, oh, no, no, no. No, oh, the second win, the second win. You wait for your second win. I'm not waiting for that. But I have a point for that. Okay. This is Ezekiel. God's talking to Ezekiel. It says, the hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley. And it was full of bones. You know, we read it. Have you, I mean, we, there's a song about like, I won't sing it, but you know what I mean, right? And then I was, when I was reading, I'm thinking, like, um, to me, because I'm a, I like things in order. I'm thinking about a valley, right, that God took Ezekiel. And then I can picture the valley and it's, and it's dry bones, but they're all in order, right? That body's properly like that. It, it died properly. No, it was an army. So probably one leg was in that corner. The other one was on the other side. Who knows? It was, it was a horrible battle. People that really die. And then, yeah, God, it says, he calls him, he says, I want you to, he says, uh, he says to, to Ezekiel, I want you to go down in the midst of the valley. And he was full of bones. Then he caused me to pass by them all around. And behold, 
there were many, very many in the open valley. Indeed, they were very dry. People have seen everything. You're going to be like, my gosh. No, not on Google. I've seen dry bones. I grew up in a civil war, so I have seen dry bones. And when they're dry, it's, it's, it's a horrible picture. And I can just imagine seeing a valley of them, like tons of them. And he says, it caused me to pass by them all around. And behold, there were many in that open valley. And indeed, they were very dried. And he said to me, son of man, can these bones live? I'm like, Ezekiel so smart. He's like, mm-mm. He said, so I answer, oh, Lord, you know. Because he, he didn't want to believe. Maybe you're in a season that you're saying, like, can you dream? Come back to life because right now it's so dead and it's so dry that it looks like it will never return to life. It doesn't even have skin. It doesn't have sino. It doesn't have nothing. It's just dust. And maybe God is asking you tonight, do you think these bones and make it whatever it is. Do you think your family, your children, your finances, you, you name it, what, kind, what bone? Do you think that they can live? And you know many times when God has asked me something that it's, uh, I don't want to say it because I don't want to be disappointed. Well, you only, you know God. No, that answer means that I, I don't want to take responsibility. Because I'm afraid to believe. I'm afraid to be disappointed. I'm afraid that I'm just going to put all of my hope and it's never going to happen. But God is dealing with, with Ezekiel because he has to prophesy to Israel. Because Israel were lost at this time. Israel had committed so many sins and they were dead. They were dead in their trespasses. They were dead in their relationship with God. And yet God is saying, you know what? It doesn't matter how dead they are and how dry these bones are. I can give them life. But I need someone who's willing to speak up. And you know how many times and to this day, like, oh, my God, God, forgive me. Sometimes they tell, I'm done. I want somebody to speak up for me. I want somebody to stand there for me. I want, I want somebody to fight for me, to prophesy for me. But you know that he's never going to agree with, with you in those conversations because he will tell you, that's why you have me. That's why we have Jesus. He prays daily for you. He gave us his Holy Spirit. We just need to agree with him. What well, verse am I? What, three? And he said to me, son of man, can these bones live? So I answer, oh, Lord, God, you know. Again, he said to me, prophesy to this bone and say to them. He even tell us what to say. Oh, dry bones. Because you know what? If we're going to prophesy and we're going to prophesy for something to come alive, stop pretending that something is not dead. Okay, I might believe for my healing, but I'm not going to say that I have depression. Then how are you going to prophesy? Listen, pay attention. It says, prophesy to these bones and say to them, oh, dry bones. They said, oh, bones are full of life. And sometimes we don't even know how to do it because we need to do it religiously. No, we need to speak. Yeah, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to face the fact. The fact is that I'm dry. The fact is that I have this disease. The fact is that I lost my finances. The fact is that I lost my family. The fact is that I lost my children. The fact, well, whatever it is, you, you, you name it. The fact is that I'm lost. Okay, but prophesy, but, but say what it is, and then we're going to speak what needs to be and what is in the eyes of God. If not, we're just kidding. He says, oh, dry bones. Surely I will cause, he says, surely I will cause breath to enter into you, and you shall live. So you know what? If you need to prophesy tonight, you have to say to whatever you're believing, you know what? Okay, fine. I'm going to get up and I'm going to say, you know, you name it. My dream, maybe my career, maybe my family, maybe my children, or you name it. 
it's dry, it's dead, it looks dead, it looks like it's never gonna come back to life. But I'm gonna believe it and I'm gonna prophesy that you are, you alone, my God, you're able to give it life. That your breath will come in. And he said, and I will, this is God speaking. Our job is to speak, his job is to do it. That's what the Holy Spirit does. We speak the word, the Holy Spirit comes and he delivers. And he says, and I will put sinews on you, bring flesh upon you, cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. So Ezekiel says, so I prophesy and I was, as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise and suddenly a rattling and the bones came together. Bone to bone. Indeed, as I, as I looked, the sinews and the flesh came upon them and the skin covered them over. But there was no breath in them. And sometimes I think that's where we stop. We, we, we start, okay, well, okay, I'm going to speak that something, right? I'm going to speak life over my life, over my finances, over my family, over my health. But then he says that he has no breath. So, but he can hear it. Something's happening. He can see that the body is being formed. And when was the first time God did that? It was when he formed Adam and he formed it out of the dust of the earth. And remember, if you read it, he says he was formed out of the dust of the earth. And he was just a body there, like a zombie. Just a... And then the, the Bible says that he breathed, he breathed life into him. And I think that's what we failed to do, that we failed to breathe life into the dry bones. We settled for 50%. I could hear the rattling. I could hear, yeah, my husband's kind of coming to church and my kids are kind of attending church or whatever, right? My finances are getting better. So I think we're good with that. No, no, no. Now you need to speak. Speak the breath of life. You know what the breath of life is? It's the Holy Spirit. And he says, that he heard this noise, right? Also, he said to me, prophesy. See, he, he, gave him, he gave him a plan. The prophecy, sometimes God gives us a prophecy. We're like, yeah, right? But we don't finish the prophecy. The prophecy is already done, but we fail to do what he's asking us to do. He says, okay, you already prophesied to the bones. Now you believe that they're going to come back to life. But then as soon as you hear the rattling and something is happening, we get like, we get already complacent. Okay, we're comfort. Okay, then, yeah, no, we're, I think we're doing good with Jesus. And we don't go the extra mile. And as I prophesied to the breath, do you need to prophesy life? Now you're going to prophesy, I am speaking and I'm prophesying breath, the breath of life over my family, over my wife, over my whatever, my spouse, over my children. I'm prophesying the breath of life over my health, over my mind, over my mental issues, over my emotional issues, whatever. I'm going to speak the breath of life over it. I'm not just going to say I'm whole in here. No, I'm prophesying the breath of life and then he says thus says the Lord come from the fourth winds O breath and breathe on this lane that they may live you know he didn't talk about a second wind he said four winds so what does that mean and that means the Holy Spirit but that means you know what I don't care if you missed your second win. He has your first win, your second win, your third win, your fourth win. He has, the, he has you covered. He has you covered and it's never too late with God. Maybe you don't even see bones anymore. It's just dust. But if you choose to believe that he's able to put life into those bones and then you're willing to speak and breathe life over them, believe me, they're going to resurrect. So it says, so I prophesy as he, as he commanded me, and breath came into them, and they lived, and stood up their feet, an exceedingly great army. So that man that before, before he spoke to the breath, right, 
they were on the floor. Yeah, they had a body. They were there, like the ox that you saw, like, okay, laying down. And I'm, I don't want to just be laying down. I want to arise with the breath of life. I want to live. God didn't die for us to survive. And I'm talking to myself, I don't want to survive life. I'm sick of it, of surviving. God didn't pay a price. He didn't go to the cross for you to survive. He went to the cross for you to thrive, for you to overcome. But believe me, that takes a lot of guts. It takes a lot of crying. It takes a lot of pain because you're dying to places that you just, you want your way. And if you're heavy laden and then you feel like over, over, overly burdened, it's because you, you're yoked probably with your own self. Or maybe with what your parents told you. Or maybe you're yoked up with the world, with someone who is wrong, totally wrong for you, with the wrong friendships, wrong relationships. And maybe we're yoked with our own sicknesses and we have been labeled things and oh, that's how okay then that's who I am you know what no 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 it's not going to define me I'm not going to deny it but it's not going to define me and that's what's going to bring life to other people because they're going to say how is it that they were able to get up how is it they could they able to continue how, how do they do that and then that's when you become crazy right and you're like well let me tell you let me tell you, let me tell you what God has done for me. You know, my life was down. I was down for the count. Because your God and my God, he's not, he's not a God that, that loves to mock his children. He will never come and breathe life into you, breathe creativity into you, and then you're not doing nothing with it. He will never give you a call and he breathed a calling into your life. And you're like this, <gasps> Try. how long are you going to live? He said, I didn't breathe that so you can keep it to yourself. No. He, he breathed life so we can to go like this. How long can you keep it? Exhale. He wants already for you to exhale what he has given you. Exhale the creativity. Exhale the business, whatever he has deposited in you. Has he called you into the business place, the marketplace, and it's there for a reason. And you're keeping it and you're choking yourself and you think it's him. how I came back like <laughs> I need sleep no but I believe it I believe it with all my heart and I'm not preaching something that hey it's such a good theology a philosophy Jesus is not a theology Jesus is not a philosophy Jesus is real I have never heard someone said to me Virginia I never knew Jesus the way that you know him because you you showed him to me in such a real way in such a real way that he is relatable to me we need to make Jesus relatable that no matter where he send us my God we speak the same language because we speak compassion we speak mercy and, and then we and we share our junk do you know how many people that I met and I was in Japan and they all told me not gonna say who, who, but the majority of people that some people that I got to minister. Do you know that I would say that majority of people that I talk to them, do you know that they deal with depression, anxiety, and they and they have all these suicidal thoughts? And you know, you know that compassion that I feel. But you know what I was able to tell them? Okay, but you can live today. I'm tired. I'm tired. I am so fed up seeing the body of Christ die I don't want to die and I'm not saying die as in physically I mean even die dried inside of me like doing this he 
breathed life unto me. If you have Jesus, he has breathed it. He has breathed life unto you. There's something amazing inside of you waiting to be exhaled. Don't eat a lot of garlic. <laughs> if you're going to be exhaling, it's like, you're going to be eating a lot of garlic. Like a, <sighs> just like exhaling the love of Jesus. Go to work. Start your business. Go home. Ask for forgiveness. Reconcile with your family. Forgive your enemies. The ones they want to choke. Forgive yourself. Do you know sometimes we can't forgive others because it's so hard to forgive ourselves. So I have a new saying in the morning I wake up. This is my doctor has told me that. That's Alexis, my daughter. Since you get up in the morning, you take your pills, right? Your, your God's pill, your word of God. And then you need to say, I have the DNA of God in me. Today, I can conquer. Today, I will see the best regardless of how I feel. Today, I will do my best. And today, I acknowledge that my Jesus is praying for me. That I have ministering angels around me and I have the body of Christ that I belong to. And what a beautiful thing it is to belong to a body of Christ. So don't run for being a part of the church. Get over it. We all have been hurt. I've been hurt in the church. Someone said, and it was funny, and I'm closing now with this. They said, people have hurt you and, and you know, when you go to restaurants, but that doesn't stop you from going and eating. Right? They didn't treat me right. They didn't offer me food. And then you come to church like, they didn't talk to me. Okay, I'm going. Bye. No, it's for us. It's, we, we need each other. We need each other. So your job is to yoke up with Jesus. Don't feel bad when your faith fails. Because God is not concerned about your faith failing. No, because he has your back and he's praying for you. Go home and see what's dead in your life and what you lost already hope and it's never going to be fixed. It's never going to, that's never going to happen. Then make a list and start speaking the word of God. But you have to say what it is. Do not be one of those people that you, you believe in for something, but you, you, you don't want to name it. I, I don't want to say that I have let's say for me right I don't want to say that I have depression okay then so how is God going to heal you he knows all things no but that's why he kept giving your mouth a, a voice because then we can help others right and that doesn't mean we're going to live there we have the joy of the Lord which is our strength and in the more we say it and the more we get into agreement there's going to be such a great army that we're all going to get up and stand up and have the breath of God and then can you imagine what we can conquer so I want to pray for you Close your eyes and thy heads. Well, Father, I just thank you for this message, Father, and I thank you that it brings conviction to our hearts. The Father, that we're not afraid. We're not afraid to go the extra mile, the extra mile to believe, to believe with all of our hearts what your word says. That no matter how impossible our situation may look, no matter how impossible it is, no matter what maybe the doctor has told you. And I, I don't know, sometimes people get healed, sometimes people don't get healed, but that's not my job. My job is to believe in. Many times it's in, it's in their court, it's in their hands. And maybe some people get tired and they just want to go to heaven. Who are we to say? We don't know what they're thinking. So, But our job is to believe for them. Our job is to believe for those families that maybe they're broken. They're the broken families, children that are addicted. Maybe they're in depression because we don't even know how to be parents because we want to do everything in a religious way. No, it's time to win our youth. And Father, I want to declare you, says, speak. Father, we might not, maybe, maybe have not been that type of people, but we're saying today we are. So Father, I speak to every house 
here tonight that is that is representing a, a household and I pray Father God that there will be such a great conviction in our hearts all of us that we know that it doesn't matter how many times we have left you it doesn't matter how times we have failed you that you have your open arms are just so wide open waiting for us waiting to receive us because that is who you are you are love and you have your full of compassion and your goodness is is, is the gospel of good news and Father, I thank you that as a church, we're going to learn how to prophesy, that we don't need a prophet to do that, that our voice, our voice alone can speak and change the world. So Father, help us, help us to, to stay in faith, no matter what we see, no matter what we hear. Help us to speak life, life. It's time to speak life into those bones that have just been laying down. So, Father, as a church, I thank you that you forgive us, Lord. And I thank you there will be such a great revival in our hearts that we decide to believe you, that no matter what, we believe that you will send, that your breath of life is coming. It is coming. Father, I thank you there's coming from the north, the east, the south, and the west. It's coming. The kingdom of heaven is coming into our lives. It's bringing us hope. It's bringing us faith, Father God, and that we will not quit. We will not quit no matter how hard it gets. But in the midst of the hardness that we will declare you faithful because you are faithful. So with every head bow and eye closed, if you're here maybe in this, in this message minister to you, let me tell you that God wants to deliver you. God wants to move on your behalf. God wants to lift burdens. God wants to remove yokes. God wants to do a miracle in your life. So if that's you with every head bow, who cares what's, who's looking at you, like it should be the least of what you care. So if that's you, I just want you to raise your hand because I'm going to pray for you. Raise your hand high. You know what? My hand is high with you. I'm done living for what people think. People are not my saviors. Jesus is my savior. So Heavenly Father, just thank you for every person that has their hand raised. And Father, you know exactly what they're going through. And I thank you, Father God, that you spoke to them tonight. And that you're saying to them that you're bringing deliverance, that you're bringing wholeness and healing. And then you are God who heals the impossible, things that are already dead and been dead for years. You said, I have the power. I have the power and I have given you the power because you have the voice. And death and life are in the power of your tongue. So I thank you that they will use their voice. They will speak to those dead dreams maybe the dead family. So whatever it is that they have lost, Father God, I thank you, Lord Jesus, that they will see it and it will take years. And they will speak, Father God, your breath of life over them, Father. So I thank you for that. And I agree with your word and I say, it, and I agree like exactly what your word says, that where two or three are gathered in your name, they are in the midst of us. You are here with us. And Father, I thank you that we acknowledge you. We're not just sitting here playing church no we are being the church we are being the body and we welcome you in our homes we welcome you in our lives we welcome you in whatever season we are and for those people that are having a great time I thank you that they will go and share how awesome you have been to them that they will not stay silent so I thank you for their life and one more question if you're here you can uh, Put your hand down and if you're here and you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus this is your opportunity to have a personal relationship with Jesus and that means that you know him it's not just knowing about him it's not because you were brought up Catholic or you were brought up Christian your parents were Christian your grandparents were Christian you knew about God I'm talking about that personal relationship that you know that he loves you that you know that he has a plan for your life and maybe right now your heart is going really fast and you feel like he's knocking at the door of your heart and he's saying he's asking you would you let me in you're like no you don't know what I've done it's too messy and he's like you know what that he doesn't he doesn't care about messes he's not afraid of messes he's not afraid of failures because that doesn't define you you're not your name is not mess your name is not failure your name is not uh, divorcee your name is not depression no your name is whatever your name you have and you're a daughter and a son of God so if you would like to have that personal relationship with Jesus and invite him 
and say, you know, I want a real relationship with Jesus. I want to get to know you, Lord. And I want to give you my life. If that's you, I just want you to raise your hand. It's a simple prayer. It takes less than 30 seconds. I'm not going to call you up. And all we're going to do is pray for you. And at the end of the service, if you want to come tell us and we'll pray with you and our prayer team, that will, I will love it. But it's you. I'm going to count three. I want you to raise your hand. One, two, three. Is there anyone saying yes to the Lord? I see the hand. I see the hand. Thank you so much. I see the hand. I see the hand. Thank you very much. Okay, so now repeat with me. After me, say, Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Thank you for never giving up on me. For loving me. Loving me to life. Because you sent your only son to die for me on the cross. So I can live. So I can have eternal life. My sins are forgiven, and I have a new future and a new hope. And I can use my words to prophesy, to speak life, and to see the impossible become possible. So thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. If today's message impacted you in any way, and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below, and we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.